we're going to talk about the attributes of God, but we're also going to have some fun, because it's Taco Sunday, so we're going to have some fun this morning. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say a word, and I want you guys to shout out one descriptive word, or the first descriptive word that comes to your mind. I know we don't usually do this on Sunday, but it's Taco Sunday. All right? So here we go. Tacos. Good. Yum. yum. I heard yum several times. Good. Today. Today. All right. All right. I just wanted to start with tacos. How about Florida? Awesome. Wonderful. Awesome. Wonderful. Hot. Free. Beaches. Amen. All right. Let's go a little deeper. Freedom Church. Awesome. Excellent. Powerful. Worship. Fellowship, okay? Uh, youth, this is just for the youth. Everybody else, shh. No, 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 that's not the word. Everybody else, <laughs> just listen to the youth. Assault. Awesome. awesome. Fun. Come on, youth. You're letting me down here. Impactful. Back there. Assault. What is it? Physically training. All right, there we go. Well, you heard it. They're super excited. <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. I got two more for you. MC. Me. I heard boring. Who was that? <laughs> Goofy. Goof? What? Goofy. All right, last one. God. Powerful, good, compassionate, giver. Amen. Amen. All right, that was fun. All right, that was fun. Now, I want you to close your eyes really quick. And I want you to imagine. Close your eyes. And I want you guys to imagine you and I, me and you, going to the Tampa Bay Lightning playoff game tonight. All right? Got it? Me and you go into the Tampa Bay Lightning game tonight. And tell me one word that describes your experience. Interesting. Odd? Physical, fun, exciting. <laughs> Three P? Nope. <laughs> All right. I, I, uh, did, I don't think I heard anybody say boring or weird, so. Because <laughs> honestly, I'd say weird if I was, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Some of you know me better than others here. Some of you have a, a deeper relationship. My kids have a deeper relationship with me here than, than obviously everybody else here. Um, some of you have a deeper friendship with me than others here. Um, some of you may not know me at all. This may be the first time that you hear my voice. So your experience is really dependent on your relationship with me, right? Right? Amen. I don't come with an instruction manual. So if we go to the hockey game and I give you, hey, this is me. First of all, that is going to be super weird. I want you to know all of this about me. I want you to, to learn all of this about me before we go out to the game. That would be really awkward. I don't come with an, instru an instruction manual. I'm also not for sale on Amazon, so I have no description attached to me at all times. I'm not a product, so you guys don't know what you're going to get when you go out with me. However, it's a little different with the Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, we get a manual that describes exactly who he is, and the Bible gives us clear descriptions of who our God is. So we're way ahead. We're way ahead because we get that instruction, man. We get the word of God given a clear description of who God is. So today we're going to list 10 attributes of God that we can find in the word. Now, I want to be really clear. This is not a cheat sheet. The Bible is not a cheat sheet. Just because you get all of these attributes, you guys know Spark Notes? Okay, the Bible is not Spark Notes. That's what I grew up with in high school. Yes, I did Spark Notes. Uh, <laughs> Cliff Notes, Cliff Notes, yes. Uh, the Bible is not a cheat sheet. It is not Spark Notes. Just because you have all of this doesn't mean you're done. Doesn't mean you can't discover more. All right? 
Um, it, mean, it doesn't mean that we need to discover God. It does not mean that we don't need to discover God for ourselves because we all have our own personal intimate relationship with the Father. The closer we get, the more apparent these attributes are in our daily lives. So you've got all of these attributes that we're going to go through right now. Um, You have them in front of you. You're going to walk your life knowing all of this about God. But the closer you get to him, the closer you get to him, um, the more in love you become with your heavenly father. Because right now, all you got is words. All you have is words. But until you discover or experience those words for yourselves, it is nothing. It is nothing until you form that relationship with Christ. Not only do we become more confident in him, we also become more confident in ourselves because we find our identity in him. Amen? All right, here we go. I'm going to give you these 10 attributes. Now, we can preach on these 10 attributes each individually. We obviously don't have time, with, time for, to do that. So I'm just going to touch on them, give you a few Bible verses on each, and maybe a simple description. Amen? So I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray because I want God to open up your hearts as we um, are going through these attributes. I want these not just to go in one ear and out the other. I want it to remain in your soul. I want it to remain in your heart. So as you are walking with him on your daily lives, you have these things that are, you're constantly being reminded of. God is this. God is that. You can use it in whatever situation you are in. Okay, so Father, I thank you for this word that you have given me today, Father. And Lord, and I'm just a vessel here to deliver your word. That's it, God. That's it, God. So use me in whatever way you you can. Use me in whatever means you have to, Father. I pray that these words, Lord, will will impact our lives, Lord, that this will be a rhema word for everybody here, Father. We thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity. We praise you and give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Number one, he is faithful. Our heavenly father is faithful. God is faithful. We find this in Numbers 23, 19. Now, everything I have here is in the New Living Translation. That's kind of been my my new translation lately. I really like it. Um, So if you have NIV, it's right up here for you in NLT. God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not human. He does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? Those are pretty simple questions. Has he ever promised and not carried it through? No. God has never failed to act. Whatever promise he makes you, he will carry it through because our God is faithful. He's faithful to forgive and he's faithful to fulfill all of his promises, not just some of his promises, all of his promises. So whatever he has told you lately or in your life, eventually it will come true because that is the God that we serve. Our God is faithful. The word of God says it there. He is 100% faithful. He is not like us. Sometimes we claim to be faithful, but sometimes we fail. God is not like us. He is faithful. Amen. Number two, God is just. God is fair and impartial. He will judge between right and wrong, and he will administer justice in accordance with his standards. Jeremiah 17.10 says this, but I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. God is just. God is just. He is fair, and he doesn't, he doesn't favor one person over another. He is impartial. Everybody here is just as much uh, capable of God's love as everybody else here. God loves us all exactly the same. He doesn't love me more because I'm up here preaching. He loves us all equally. Number three, God is holy. Holy. Exodus 15, 11, who is like you among the gods, O Lord, glorious in holiness, awesome in splendor, performing great wonders. Our God is holy. He is set apart. There's nobody like him. He is matchless. He is unequaled. There's nobody like God. 
He is perfect in every way. His moral excellence serves as a template for us. So what we know of God should serve as a template for us to want to be like that. Okay, so what you read in this word right here is an example for us, how we need to live our lives, how we need to act, how we need to treat others, how we need to love others. It is an example. He has given us this example in our lives. God's holiness infinitely sets us apart from his creation. Number four, God is omnipotent. God, uh, this word derives from the Latin omnis, meaning all, and potens, or powerful. So all powerful. It's not a word used in the Bible, but almighty appears in virtually every book in the Old Testament. Dozens of times, in fact. His power, you can just walk outside right now and see the power of God. You see it in creation. He spoke things into creation. And just imagine being present during all of that. Day one, when he spoke the earth into existence. That's power. His power is seen in miracles. You guys have seen miracles here, so you have experienced the power of God. I've seen a miracle with my youngest son, Noah. I experienced the power of God. You see, you see his power in nature. Again, just walking outside. You see everything that he has created, and you wonder. I mean, I, when I'm out there landscaping, I'm like, how is this little tiny seed, how does it grow into such a beautiful flower or beautiful plant? You experience his power in nature. You experience his power in your daily lives, just getting up in the morning. That's the power of God waking you up. Amen. How is it possible? I, I, I get baffled sometimes by uh, people that don't believe in creation. Because it's harder to believe in nothing than it is to believe in something. How can you believe that nothing created all of this? It makes no sense to me. There had to be some intelligence. This is a whole nother preaching. There had to be some intelligence behind creation. I mean, we are intricate human beings. Things are still being discovered in us today that God has, we'll get more into that, that God has always known about. You have to believe in something. We believe in God. We know that God is the creator. And his power works through us. 2 Corinthians 12, 9, 12, 9 says, each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am, I, so now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. Do you guys realize that? You have the power of Christ in you. The, the word says, for greater things than these we can do. For greater things than these, what is in here? For greater things than the miracles that are written in here, we have the power to do because Jesus is seated right, seated right, be, right beside uh, God. We have the power of God within us. It's not because we do it on our own. It's because God, we have that power emanating from us. God is using us in his kingdom. Number five, God is omniscient. This is defined as the state of having total knowledge, the quality of knowing everything. Psalm 139, one through three says, Oh Lord, you have examined my heart and you know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You can't hide from God. Let's just put that out there. You cannot hide from God. He knows everything you do, whenever you do it, however you do it. He knows every single thing that you do. He is everywhere. He knows everything. He has total knowledge of everything that is going on in your lives. 1 John 3.20 says, even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings, and he knows everything. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than those feelings, and he knows everything. So if you're dealing with guilt right now, know that he knows, he knows that and he sees that. 
and he loves you. He loves you. A.W. Tozer wrote in The Pursuit of God, he is omniscient, which means that he knows in one free and effortless act all matter, all spirit, all relationships, all events. He knows all matter. Elijah loves science, and, we, and he, he's talked about matter in the past and how matter makes up every single thing in this world, every single thing. See, God is in control of all that matter. That's, that's pretty amazing. Here's a, here's a fun fact for you guys. Recently, I don't know if you, if you heard this, uh, recently scientists say they found a new human organ. Did you guys hear that? They dubbed this organ the interstitium. I hope I got that right, interstitium. This new organ is a network of fluid-filled cavities found everywhere in the body. They weren't able to discover it before, but because of modern technology, um, they were able to discover these fluid-filled cavities. Before, it was just empty space. Now they're actually fluid-filled cavities. And they call it an organ. Um, I forget why they call it an organ, but they, they're calling it an organ. So that's, that's just what they say. See, while humans are still discovering things about our own bodies, God has already known all of that before. Because he's all-knowing. He knows everything. We, we are going to continue, as humans, we're going to continue to find new species. We're going to continue to discover new things about us. We're going to continue to build new things. God knows everything. All right, so we're at the, uh, the halfway point. We've listed these five attributes of God so far. So how do you guys feel? It's good to hear these things, right? I mean, sometimes we just need to be reminded of these to, to continue to strengthen us in our walk. Um, so we've heard these five attributes so far. God is faithful. God is just. God is holy. He is omnipotent. He is all-knowing, or he is all-powerful, and he is omniscient, all-knowing. You guys want to keep on going? Yes. Amen. Number six, God is omnipresent. God is present everywhere, always. So wherever you're at, whatever walk of life you're in, whatever situation you're going through, God is present. The word of God says it. God is present. Proverbs 15, 3. The Lord is watching everywhere keeping his eye on both the evil and the good. Psalm 139, 7 through 10. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the furthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. Wherever you go, whatever you do, Whatever you're going through, God is there. Sometimes it may not seem like it because we get bombarded by the things of life. We get, uh, we get distracted. But take a moment, step out of your situation, and realize that God is there. He is in complete control. Amen? It may be hard to believe that because you may be going through some rough things right now but he is in complete control. We're never alone. We are never alone. I mean, that just, that is just incredible to know that God is, is always, think about that, he is always by your side. When you need something, when you feel down, when you're afraid, you have the heavenly father right beside you. He is ready to stir you up out of that situation. He is ready to speak a word of love into you. He is ready to hug you with open arms. He is ready to accept you exactly how you are. We don't need to get prepared. He is ready to accept you just as you are. That is the God that we serve. He has never left us alone a day in our lives, ever. And though we may feel it, he has always been there. Number seven, God is loving. I, lo I, I, I love this. I love this because I, I wish I can love the way God loves. I don't, we can't. I don't think we can. God is, is amazing. He has many different types of love. The three that, 
that we know of is agape phileos and, what was the third one? Eros, agape phileos and eros. And he loves with this agape love, this unconditional love. Guys, no matter what you've gone through in your life, no matter what you have done in your life, no matter what sin you have committed in your life, he still loves you unconditionally. There's nothing, nothing at all, nothing in this world that can break that love that he has for you. That's the God that we serve. Think about the way your, you know, your, your earthly love, the way your family members love you, the way your parents love you. Multiply that by 10 trillion, I don't know, infinity. That's the way that God loves you. I wish I can show my kids the, my, the love that God shows me that I can give it to my kids, that I can show that same love for my wife. I think I'm almost there, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't think we can reach that point because God is the ultimate in love. Romans 8, 39, no power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I mean, he loves us so much that he came down to earth in human form. He gave his only son, his one and only son, died on the cross for you and I. There is no greater love than that. He took on every single sin that we have ever committed, every single sin that we will ever commit. He took those on the cross. He was beaten. He took our pain, our physical pain. He took our our emotional pain. He took everything that we suffer with, everything that we will ever deal with, past, present, and future. He took it on that cross because he loves you. There is no greater love than the love of God. His love is unconditional. That agape, agape means that unconditional love. His love is unconditional. I cannot say that enough. There is no conditions. There is nothing, nothing, guys, there is nothing that you can do to separate you from the love of Christ. Number eight, God is sovereign. First Chronicles 29, 11 through 12. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Everything in the heaven and the earth is yours, O Lord, and this is your kingdom. We adore you as the one who is over all things. Wealth and honor come from you alone, for you rule over everything. Power and might are in your hand, and at your discretion, people are made great and given strength. God is sovereign. God is is almighty, all-powerful. There is nobody like him. He rules over everything on this earth. He rules over you. He rules over me. He rules over the animals, the birds of the air. He rules over everything in this earth. Amen? Getting ready for tacos. Number nine, God is merciful. Matthew 5.45b says, For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. He is merciful. It doesn't matter. Again, it doesn't matter what you have done. God has mercy. He will forgive you for what you have done. All you have to do is simply ask, right? In God's mercy, he has provided a way for us to be reconciled with him and to meet his standards. That came by the way of his son, Jesus Christ, who was provided to us as a substitute to pay our penalty if we, he, if we are willing to accept him as our savior. That is key. You have to be willing to accept Jesus Christ as your savior. Amen? Through the acceptance of Jesus, God, who is both just and merciful, merciful will forgive our shortcomings. It's incredible. I mean, all we got to do is say, Jesus Christ, I accept you. I need you, Jesus. And God will have mercy on us. He will forgive us. 
because he loves us. And last but certainly not least, because there are so many attributes that we can continue to go on with this. But number 10 is God is immutable. He doesn't change. God doesn't change. Now, originally, this is what I was going to put my message on, on how God doesn't change, but it obviously took me in a different direction. Um, James 1.17. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shadow. Isaiah 48 says, The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. This Bible, this word of God never changes. Jesus never changes. God never changes. God is never going to be less powerful. He's never going to be less faithful. He's never going to be less loving. And for that matter, he's never going to be more loving or more faithful or more powerful because he is ultimately all of that to the absolute max. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I, I love thinking about this. This is, I just absolutely love thinking about how God doesn't change because we look back in the word of God. We look back at the stories and how he delivered his people and how he had somebody build an ark and how he flooded the earth. We look at the power behind the word of God here just to know that that same power lives today. Everything that he did in the past it hasn't changed. All of that power hasn't changed. So, again, whatever situation you're going through, just open up the Word of God and see what He did in the lives of the people in here. See how He set them free. That same power you can have because God doesn't change. Just because you mess up one day doesn't mean that God is going to love you any less. He still loves you. His love is unconditional. We're humans. We were born into sin. Just because you sin tomorrow doesn't mean that God is going to look in disgust at you. Doesn't mean that he's going to love you any less. It doesn't change. His love does not change. Again, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Putting all the, I was, as I finished this, I was going to try to uh, list all these things in order of importance. You can't do it. You can't do it. There is no uh, one thing that is more important than the other. Every single one describes God. You can't have one without the other. So you get the list how it is. There is no importance in that list whatsoever. There is not one attribute that is greater than any other. They are all equally important. It's like having peanut butter and jelly sandwich without the bread. <laughs> it's going to be extremely sloppy trying to eat that peanut butter and jelly. You may need a straw. I, I had to do that because Elijah. <laughs> Elijah told me, I bet you can't use peanut butter and jelly in your sermon. <laughs> Oh, you need the bread in order to have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Just like you need all of these attributes in order to have Jesus, in order to have God, right? Amen. So all parts are equally important. All right, so now we've listed all of the 10 attributes. We're going to have a little bit more fun now. I want you guys to close your eyes. Now, having every single one of these attributes in mind, I'll, I'm going to say them really quick for you. Keep your eyes closed. He is faithful, just, holy omnipotent, omniscient. Keep your eyes closed. <laughs> Omnipresent, loving, sovereign, merciful, and immutable, or he doesn't change. Having all of those things in your mind, here's what I want you to do. I want you to picture yourself walking in the forest beside a stream. You hear the water rushing down the stream, and you hear the sounds of nature. You hear birds chirping. Maybe you hear a bear growling in the background. You hear the sounds of nature. 
Now picture Jesus walking beside you. And you two are having a conversation. You're laughing, and then you're skipping rocks on the water. You're having a great time with Jesus. Now open your eyes. Tell me, what did you think of Jesus? Just shout it out. Close, compassionate, loving, gentle, friend, brother, peace, peaceful. Amen. Did it help knowing these attributes? So you can go to a hockey game with me, but you know nothing about me. It's going to be a pretty awkward experience. <laughs> it's going to be an awkward experience, but because you have this already written down for you, it makes the experience a whole lot better, right? Because you know who your father is, it makes your experience a whole lot better. And it makes you want to get closer to him. Amen? Everyone here, everybody said something different here. Everyone had their own unique experience with Jesus in that little activity that we just did. And that's because every, acti every um, experience is based on your own life experiences things that you've been through with Jesus or things that you've been through in life. So everybody has their own unique experience. And that just shows that God is everywhere. That just shows that God is with Joey at the same time that he's with Yenna. It shows that God is in the back of the room at the same time that he's down over here. He's in everybody's heart at the same time, everywhere. I mean, that's like, you know, it's mind-blowing. That's Pastor Bruce. <laughs> How does knowing these attributes of God help us with our walk with Christ? And this is in closing. Knowing all of this about our Father makes it infinitely easier to get, uh, infinitely easier to go to our Heavenly Father in times of need. It's hard to go to somebody if you don't know them. When you're struggling in life, it's hard to talk to somebody, even a counselor, if you don't know them. It can be hard to open up. But because you know your Heavenly Father, it makes it so much easier to go to Him when you need counsel, when you need help, when you need a hug, when you need love. It makes it that much easier. How you view God and His involvement in your life, it touches every facet of who you are. Everything about your life, your desires, your motives, your attitudes, your words, and your actions is influenced by your perception of who God is. Your self-image will improve once you realize the awesome greatness of God and the value he places on you. The more accurate your understanding of who God really is and how he is involved in your life, the more highly motivated you will become to excel in the use of your time, talents, and abilities. Guys, God is wholly, 100% committed to his relationship with you. Not 50, not 10, not because you don't know him, nothing. God is 100% committed to, your, to his relationship with you. And I leave you with this. Are you 100% committed in that relationship as well? If you're not, I encourage you to go over these attributes of God. Read the word of God. Find more attributes of him. And commit yourself 100%. Amen? Yeah, Father, we thank you for this word, God, again. Let it dwell in our hearts, God, as we um, continue on this journey with you, Lord. We love you. God, we give you all the glory. Lord, we thank you for what you are doing in our lives, Father. We ask that you... Just continue to bring peace in our lives, Father. As we continue to grow closer to you, Lord, let us find more attributes about you, Father. Let us discover new things about you, God. Let us grow more intimately in love with you, Lord. We praise you again, God. We give you all the glory. In your name we pray. Amen.